Welcome, everyone. Let's begin our lesson for today by going over the learning goals and success criteria. First, what are we learning? We're learning how to recognize patterns in a round-robin style tournament in order to count the total number of games played. We're learning how to use repeated reasoning to expand the tournament to include more teams, to relate word problems to probability functions, to recognize the difference between fixed and varying quantities within various scenarios, to recognize and state the relationship between the fixed and varying quantities, to recognize independent and dependent variables and relate them back to your understanding of fixed and varying quantities, to recognize the proper domain and range of various scenarios, to recognize the various mappings that can occur between the domain and range, and to relate graphs, descriptions, and function equations to one another. How are we learning it? Through the reasoning with relationships review notes and the reasoning with relationships review assignment. When can we use this information? To set up tournaments for your future children's sporting events, to predict outcomes of events at work and in your personal life, to examine the variables that need to be accounted for when beginning a project, such as completing a big project for one of your classes, to recognize all the possible outcomes of various scenarios, such as the potential outcomes that would allow your favorite team to make the playoffs, and to connect and group information together when the information is the same but represented differently. How do you know you learned it? By getting a score of four on the Reasoning with Relationships Review assignment. Now let's take a look at our agenda for today. We will begin by going over the learning goals and success criteria. While we do that, you'll fill out your Get It Started. After that, we'll go over the Reasoning with Relationships notes, and then I'll give you time to complete the Reasoning with Relationships review assignment. At the end of class, we'll go back over our learning goals and success criteria while you fill out your Before You Go. Your only homework for tonight is to continue working on the Reasoning with Representations of Function study guide and any incomplete assignments that you may have. Let's take a look now at the Reasoning with Relationships review notes. The notes begin with the learning goals and success criteria. So here's the scenario. A local soccer tournament is played in a round-robin format where every team plays every other team. Assuming that every team plays every other team exactly once, how many games will be played among the 10 teams? Explain your strategy. So that's the, what the question is asking us. So a couple strategies to try. Number one, Solve a simpler problem. So this could end up being a lot of games. So maybe start with five teams instead of 10, and then see if there's a pattern that you notice. Draw a diagram. So maybe you start with 10 and you start drawing lines to the other games. So you'll, you can use a diagram as well. Make an organized list and count the games. Look for any patterns you have previously learned. So anything that you've learned in any type of math class that might help you with this. See if there's any patterns that you recognize. And lastly, try to see if there's an equation or function that you already know to solve it. And you may not have all these. You may not be able to use all of these strategies. These are just some to try. So try out two different strategies to complete the question. Solution. There are exactly 45 games that were played. And the way we know that is by using combinations. So if you remember back to probability, we can use combinations, which says 10 times 9 over 2, or 10 factorial over 8 factorial, 2 factorial, because we're doing 10 choose 2. So that's 10 factorial over 10 minus 2 factorial over times 2 factorial. Another way you can write it is 10 choose 2 using the combination. First, let's talk about the types of quantities. There are two types of quantities. The first are fixed quantities. The second is varying quantities. Now, what does this mean? Fixed quantities do not change. They will always be the same. So an example of this would be the amount of liquid a water bottle can hold. Right? If I pour liquid into the water bottle, there may be a different amount of liquid based on how much I fill it, but the maximum amount of water that it can hold does not change. If it's a 16 ounce bottle, it's only going to hold 16 ounces. That's it. It can't hold any more than that. That's a fixed quantity. Varying quantities change. So these are changeable uh, quantities that depend on other factors. For instance, if we go back to our water bottle scenario, the amount of water in the water bottle changes, right? So I can fill it up. That means it's going to increase. I could drink some out of it or pour it out, and it's going to start to go down. So the amount of liquid in the bottle does change, but the size of the bottle doesn't. 
So understanding the relationships between them, in every scenario in which varying quantities are changing, we can examine the relationship between the factors that are changing and the factors that cannot change. For instance, as time elapses, so as time passes, someone drinks water from a water bottle and the amount of liquid in the water bottle decreases. This is a relationship. We know that 16 ounces is the maximum for the water bottle. It doesn't change. However, the amount of water in it is changing as time passes. So this is how we can state a relationship between a fixed and a varying quantity. So just a reminder, there are two types of elements of a function. The first is the domain, and the domain represents the input or the starting values, and the range represents the output values or the things that the domain is mapped to. Now within that, there are different kinds of mappings. There are four different kinds of mappings. The first one is one to one, the second is one to many, the third is many to one, and the last one is many to many. Now what does that look like? So one to one mappings mean that for every element in the domain, it maps to exactly one in the range, and it also go, works in the other way. For every one in the range, there's exactly one in the domain that it maps to. So here we can see that this one maps to this one, and this one maps to this one. So in both the domain and range, I don't see where they map to two different places. So that's one to one mapping. One to many. So one to many means that there is an element in the domain that is mapping to many or multiple places in the domain. So one to many means that there are, there's a point here in the domain that's mapping to many or multiple places in the range. So for instance, I have this one and it's mapping here and here. So this is one to many. So even though all the other elements are okay, if even one of them goes to multiple places, it becomes a one-to-many mapping. Okay, many-to-one. So many-to-one means that there are elements in the domain that map to exactly one in the range, but there are multiple spots in the domain that map to the same spot in the range. For instance, we have these two here, and they both go to this point in the range, so this is many-to-one. So many, meaning multiple in the domain, map to one spot in the range. The last one is many to many, and this means that there are multiples that go in both directions. So it's both many to one and one to many. So here we have this point here that's mapping to multiples here in the range. And we also have this one in the range that's mapping to multiples in the domain. So this is many to many. Now, determining whether something is a function or not. A function only exists when each member of the domain maps to exactly one member of the range. So, in order for something to be a function, it needs to be either one-to-one -one or many-to-one. Now, for it to not be a function, that means that something in the domain maps to multiple places in the range. So, in order for it to be not a function, it needs to be one-to-many or many-to-many. So let's look at an example here. We have the books in a library and the number of pages in each book. So notice there are no actual elements. We need to use our logic here. So the domain is the number of pages. The mapping, now we need to decide. So, so the question is, is it possible for multiple books to have the same number of pages? Well, yeah, we can have two books with the same number of pages. Is it possible, though, for a certain number of pages to belong to different books? Well, yes, so this becomes a one-to-many scenario, and we know that one-to-many means that it is not a function because we can have a number, a number of pages. Let's say this is 25 pages, and we could have six books that are 25 pages each. So it's one-to-many, and it is not a function. So our explanation would be several books may contain the same number of pages. So this is how you'll do your activity for today. Now let's take a look at the vertical line test. So this is another way to check to see if something is a function. So the first of all, we need to check to see if there's exactly one y for every x or one member of the range for, exact, for every member of the domain. So if at any point I can draw a vertical line through the graph of a function and touch in two places, then it is not a function. 
So in this case, we draw a line here, and we can see that it is not a function. Let's look at another example. We have a function here, and we need to decide, is this a function based on the vertical line test? So if I draw this, I can see that no matter where I draw my line, it still doesn't touch in two places, so therefore this is a function. Let's take a look now at the reasoning with relationships review assignment. The assignment begins with the learning goals and success criteria. If we scroll down, we can see the questions. The first one says, given the scenario, a hose is filling a cylindrical pool with water, which of the following is not a fixed quantity? Remember now, a fixed quantity means something that doesn't change. So the diameter of a pool, that doesn't change, right? The size of the pool is always gonna be the same. The depth of the pool, that always stays the same. It can't hold more than it can hold. The volume of water in the pool. Well, we can add and change the amount of water in there, so that can change, so that's not a fixed quantity. And the filling rate of the pool, so how fast the water comes out of the hose. Well, we can't adjust that, so the only thing that's not a fixed quantity is the volume of water in the pool. So we're gonna answer each of these questions. And then there's this one. If a round robin tournament was held with 10 teams, how many games would be played if each team played each other exactly once? Well, we know that that should end up being 10 factorial over 8 factorial times 2 factorial. So when we do that, we end up with 45 games. And we'll continue to answer these questions all the way until we get to the end. Once we get to the end, we'll go ahead and click next. This will take you to your before you go. Go ahead and fill out your before you go and then submit your work on Google Classroom.